Hey, brothers and sisters, we give praise to Ahaya, Ashere Ahaya, Jabata, Chalam. Jabata, Chalam. Right, we give glory to our Donna Yache for all that he's strengthening us to partake in. All right, we're looking at the fourth mountain, parable 9 of Hermas, chapter 1, verse 6. Parable 9, chapter 1, verse 6. The fourth had the vegetation half withered, the upper part of the grass green, but the part by the root withered. And some of the grass became withered whenever the sun had scorched it. All right. So let's look at chapter 20, verse 1, to get understanding on this fourth mountain. And from the fourth mountain, which had much vegetation, the upper part of the grass green, and the part towards the root withered, and some of it dried up by the sun. They that believed are such as these, the double-minded, and they that have a high on their lips, but have him not in their hearts. Therefore, their foundations are dry and without power, and their words only live, but their works are dead. That lets us know that we cannot just speak it. We have to be doers of the word that will be justified as Romans chapter 2, about verse 12 or 13 testifies. Such men are neither alive nor dead. They are, therefore, like unto the double-minded. Right. For the double-minded are neither green nor withered, but they are neither alive nor dead. There we see Ahaya judges our actions to see if we truly are righteous. We look at First Samuel chapter two, verse three. Well, this ties into being lukewarm. Absolutely. <laughs> First Samuel chapter two, verse three. Talk no more so exceedingly proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, for Ahaya is an Elohim of knowledge. And by him, actions are weighed. He looks to see what we do. Because our words don't tell the whole story. Our actions will testify what is truly in us. Now going back to Parable 9, chapter 20, verse 3. For as their grass was withered up when it saw the sun, so also the double-minded, when they hear of tribulation, through their cowardice worship idols, and are ashamed of the name of their Adonai. Can you read that verse one more time? So also the double-minded, when they hear of tribulation. So in heat coming, there's the similitude of tribulation, some kind of test, some kind of temptation. What happens? Through their cowardice worship idols, and are ashamed of the name of their Adonai. So we see the cowardice. In talk, one we would say, we're for Allah, I am, we're his servant. But then when tempted, our cowardice is exposed and we serve the idols. Now, this is interesting because this isn't just literally, I serve Allah Hayam and somebody tempts me to eat Christmas dinner and I give in and go eat Christmas dinner. Now, a deeper example from the heart is, I serve Allah Hayam, I'm bound to charity. Someone comes tempting me to argue with me, and so on and so forth. Do I worship the idol, the angel of iniquity? and start arguing back with them and come out of the fruits of the Spirit? Do I go into pride and not keep the commandment of being meek with lowliness and being gentle and good as Yache? So you can see this is not just the blatant idol worship partaking in pagan worship. It's also from within, from the heart. Because he said these people have Ahaya in their mouth, but their heart is far from him. Even to the when somebody comes and they do something wrong to you, do you wish to vex them in your heart? Do you wish to do something wrong to them in your heart? Do you have wicked imaginations that come saying, okay, I should do this, I should do that, when they did something wrong to you? That, that's that, the inner man. Right, because this is where the issue is. He said it's in their heart they fall from him. That's a true testimony to have these things happen. And we fight from the heart to make sure the thought doesn't take place. Right. That's why he says, fret not thyself because of evil doers. Because people are going to do wrong to you. But you can't allow a wicked imagination to stir up in your heart against them. You have to forgive them, knowing that what they do, they do it unto Yahche. Because they hate the spirit of Yahche in you, and they're doing it not because they hate you. It's true. In the end times, People shall die through their double mind. Let's look at Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 68 and 69. 
Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 68. But behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is coming over you, and they shall take away certain of you, and feed you being idle with things offered unto idols. Well, it's showing that those that are idle means they're unable to resist. They're going to eat the things offered unto idols because in their hearts they weren't founded on the faith. And their cowardice will get exposed at that time. And this time, sadly, it would be to their demise. Uh, continue. And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in reproach. Be given over to derision. That means the spirit will leave us and we're given over to the evil spirit. And we trod on the foot. All right. Now, going back to Hermas parable 9, chapter 20, verse 4. Such are neither alive nor dead. It's speaking about the double-minded who have ahaya in their mouth, but not in their heart. Yet these also, if they repent quickly, shall be able to live. But if they repent not, they are delivered over already to the women who deprive them of their life. Because once one is in double-mindedness, we're already in the grips of the evil spirit. Right. Now, that's the fourth mountain. All right. We're good. Chava ta chala. Chava ta chala. Thank you.